are so many things to worry about, so many things to be concerned about. Um, there's, there are many troubles in the world, of course, and we, th these are important and we need to solve them. But we also need things that make us ex excited to be alive, that make us glad to wake up in the morning um, and be fired up about the future and, and think, yeah, the future is going to be great. Our mission is not to create self-driving cars. Our mission is to create the infrastructure, the computer, and the software so that every company in the world could build self-driving cars. We believe that everything that moves in the future will have autonomous capability. Whether it's passenger-owned vehicles or vans or trucks or shuttles or delivery bots, everything will have autonomous capability. It could be completely autonomous, or it could have us in the loop autonomous. And the algorithms and the computing structure is basically the same. The first thing we do for self-driving cars, from the data collection, data labeling, to the training of the models, the simulation of the self-driving car, to the in-car computing platform, we create all of that. We create all of it, and we operate it ourselves as if it's our car. However, we make the entire computing platform open. The software stack from the operating system to the middleware, the reference applications, and the pre-trained networks. The networks that we use to, to uh, create this autonomous vehicle are all made available to our partners. So first thing, we're not Google. And we're not a car company. We're also not a self-driving car company. Rather, we're a technology company. And we're building the world's most experienced driver. We call it the Waymo driver. And it's our mission to make it safe and easy for people and things to move around the world. Why are we doing this? Why is Tesla, uh, why does Tesla exist? Why, why are we making electric cars? Uh, why does it matter? Um, it's because it's very important to accelerate the transition to sustainable transport. I mean, this, is, this is really important for the future of the world. Deep learning has made it possible for us to finally crack that nut. That with deep learning, we can now perceive the world not just sense the world. Sensation is seeing, hearing, touching, those are senses. Perception is accumulating all of those senses and building a mental model of what it is that you're perceiving. We put the Waymo driver through over 16 billion, with a B, kilometers of simulation. Uh, we do have a major program at Tesla called Dojo. That's uh, a super powerful training computer. Uh, the goal of Dojo will be to be able to take in vast amounts of data and train at a video level um, and do unsupervised massive training of vast amounts of video. This one is address to address. From a car stopped drive across 17 miles, three highways, four interchanges with lights, autonomously, merging into traffic, changing lanes. The car had to create its own map. If a car is a great self-driving car, it's also a great mapping car. And so the first time it drove, it maps the roads. It fuses multiple drives together, and so now it remembers I've been here before, and it's a guide to help it localize, after which it does real-time perception. We've been testing Waymo in over 25 different cities in the U.S. We believe that the only way 
to solve the problem of roadway safety was to take the human out of the loop completely. This was the only way to get it done. We committed at that point to full autonomy, no driver monitoring, nor driver's license required. And there's just really no, no company that has the full stack integration. We've got the, the vehicle design and manufacturing, we've got the computer hardware in-house, we've got the in-house software development um, the, and, and AI, and we've got by far the biggest fleet. It's extremely difficult, not impossible perhaps, but extremely difficult to catch up when Tesla has 100 times more um, miles per day than everyone else combined. Open platform, BBA driving by itself, the car even makes sure that you're paying attention. Sophisticated AI, posture recognition, all kinds of interesting AIs I'm going to do for a cockpit, as well as the confidence view, so that the AI could show you what's in their brain. The confidence view is very, very important to give you a sense that the AI is doing the right thing. We need intelligence to give us feedback. The confidence view is what gives us feedback. We have three kinds of sensors in the car. We have camera vision systems that see 360. Um, we have radars all the way around the car that see in radar vision um, 360. And then we have this technology called LiDAR uh, based on lasers that also see in 360 vision. So in terms of driving the car, the basic sequence is collect lots of information from the, the world around you. Not only do we have cameras, we also have radar, GPS, maps, the IMUs, ultrasonic sensors around the car. We have wheel ticks, steering angle. We know what the acceleration and deceleration of the car is supposed to be. All of that gets integrated together to form a plan. Once we have a plan, the two machines exchange their independent a version of the plan to make sure it's the same. And assuming that we agree, we then act and drive the car. Now once you've driven the car with some new control, you of course want to validate it. So we validate that what we transmitted was what we intend to transmit to the other actuators in the car. And then you can use the sensor suite to make sure that it happens. So if you ask the car to accelerate or brake or steer right or left, you can look at the accelerometers and make sure that you are in fact doing that. So there's a tremendous amount of redundancy and overlap in both our data acquisition and our data monitoring capabilities here. There are 300 million trucks on the road carrying things to us so that we could live our lives. The infrastructure of society is made possible by all of these trucks, and they're carrying things over a trillion miles a year. This Transfer, transportation industry is one of the largest industries in the world. It is also one of the most vital. Without it, society doesn't move forward. Without it, we don't have the fundamental infrastructure to live our lives. And yet, this is also one of the industries that has the largest waste. And the largest waste comes from human error. The fact of the matter is, these massive machines shouldn't be operated by humans. But our technology can also make trucking safer and stronger and fill a pressing need for drivers in many parts of the world. Now we've already conducted road tests of the Waymo driver in these big class eight trucks in the US and we're working closely with the ecosystem in trucking, which includes shippers, of course the truck makers and the suppliers to ensure a successful deployment there. The Tesla the Tesla Semi will go zero to 60 in five seconds. Part of the way we achieve that is with the bullet-shaped nose. We also have side flaps that map to the, whatever trail you're pulling, whether it's a new trailer or old tra trailer, the, the side flaps will map to whatever trail you're, you're pulling and close the gap. So uh, this, this makes a huge difference to the drag coefficient. Uh, the, the bottom of the truck is also completely flat, so the air can flow straight through. Uh, these are things that you don't see on any other trucks, and it gives us incredible highway range. It's one of the key factors. The 
It is so fun to be in the middle of the computer industry, and it's just incredibly thrilling to be in the middle of the automotive industry. Because of artificial intelligence, the technology that is going to really reshape how we all enjoy technology in the coming years, we're able to now realize the dreams that we've been dreaming about for so many years. What used to be science fiction is going to be reality in the coming years. Of course, we would like to turn your car into an AI. That by applying this technology, we could revolutionize the autom automobile and bring joy and delight and the safety to millions and millions of people in the future. So what does the future hold for Waymo and the deployment of our technology? Well, with the hope of our partners, we plan to deploy Waymo globally. As an independent um, application of our technology, we're going to be addressing many different business models. The first that we've talked about here is ride hailing. It's an important first application, provides accessibility for a lot of different people around the world. I feel very confident in predicting uh, autonomous robo-taxis for Tesla next year. Not in, all not in all jurisdictions, because we won't have regulatory approval everywhere, but I, I, I'm confident we'll have at least regulatory approval somewhere literally next year. Um, so any customer will be able to add or remove their car to the Tesla network. So we expect this to operate um, it's sort of, it's sort of a, like a combination of maybe the Uber and Airbnb model. So if you own the car, you can add or subtract it to the Tesla network, and Tesla would uh, take uh, 25 or 30% of the revenue. Um, and, uh, and then in places where there aren't enough people sharing their cars, we would just have dedicated uh, Tesla vehicles. Deep learning has made it possible for us to finally crack that nut. We've driven autonomously 16 million kilometers. Nobody has the fleet. Those weights are constantly being updated and improved. Uh, based on billions of miles driven.